Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It's Monday review time as I take a look back at Saturday's victory in the league. We went to the Pirelli Stadium to take on Burton Albion, fresh from their League Cup hammering at Man City last Wednesday. And fair play to them. I thought they'd be exhausted mentally and physically after being get, um, getting the run around at the Etihad for 90 minutes just three days previously. But by all accounts, they were much the better side. They had more of the ball. They had more of the territory. They certainly had more of the chances. Um, but as the old saying goes, goals win games. And we scored more than Burton. And we earned the three points. And it was certainly a, a backs-to-the-walls effort for the main. Um, looking at the possession statistics, um, you only have to see that they had 21 shots off target and 10 on target. Um, but as I say, goals win games. We got three, they got two. I can understand 100% why their fans were probably angry and disappointed that they've not earned anything from the game. And I've seen a couple of comments they've made on fan forums saying that we were rubbish and little old Gillingham and this and that. And we've spent our existence annoying teams like that, haven't we? So fair play to all the boys because they was up against it for the for plenty of the, of the match and they dug in and they were resolute again. I think that's a word that we've used quite a lot recently. And... Um, Yes, the first goal was against the runner play, but my oh my, how quick was Elliot List? Poor old John Brayford looked like he was treading treacle. Um, and then we got a bit of luck with the uh, the second goal stroke of half time. Um, with a penalty, I think it's one of them. If, if you're the defending side and a supporter of the defending side, you say it's soft. If you're a Jules fan like us, then obviously we're all screen pen because it's hit the arm. But there is a case to say that potentially the defender could have been sent off for the foul that led to the free kick, which then led to the penalty because Regan Charles Cook is seemingly through on goal and ready to, to have a clear goal scoring opportunity. So um yeah, back to back wins. Cardiff last week in the cup. Another victory in the league. As I say, that gives us breathing space now between us and the bottom four. We do have a couple of home games coming up in the next couple of weeks that you would put down as winnable. Um but obviously we'll talk about more of them in the future. Um but yeah in terms of the game um, Luke Cordell's last paragraph, which I always look to. Jules didn't deserve the play points, didn't deserve the three points on general play, but they never gave in, and the determination meant they always had a chance. Burton might have had 31 shots, but goals are all that matter, and the Jules delivered when it mattered most. We did, and in injury time, this man popped up with the winner. That is, of course, Josh Reese who netted the last-minute clincher. Um, and it's a really, really good goal. Um, I said, said at the beginning of the season, I thought we had something about him that there was there to work with. And I'm not, not saying I was in the minority, but there were plenty that sort of had a lot of question marks over him. And that's fair enough. He stepped up two divisions. Unfortunately, <coughs> excuse me, missed a lot of pre-season with an ankle problem. And he's probably been playing catch-up ever since. But... There's been signs in the last few weeks that when he's come on, he's, he's tried to influence games and he's, he's, he's starting to get used to the rigours and, and the, the, the change between the National League and League One. And at South End, he was decent when he, when he came off the bench and he had a good shot saved and was influential from the middle of the park. And obviously, Saturday would be a great relief, a monkey off his back, so to speak. Um, and in terms of the goal itself, it wasn't just him. There was another player involved, Brandon Hanlon, who's come under a little bit of stick from some parts in the Gillingham support, which I find a little bit harsh again as well. Um, it's a terrific ball from Josh to get to get Brendan Hanlon into the, the left-hand channel so late on. I mean, when you're chasing a game or you've been digging in for so long, chances are that you're a bit tired and you might just get a long hopeful ball somewhere or hit the channel and just try and play for time and pick the point up. But it's a really clever ball from, from Josh Reese and from there Brandon Hanlon does really well, gets inside his defender and has a look up and plays a really smart ball into Elliot List who's claiming the assist. But I think, um, I don't think he knew a lot about it in all truth. I think he's trying to spin and have a shot left footed, but he has a touch and it's slightly heavy and Josh Reese is aware and runs onto it left footed and Clips one in the far corner and then runs off and there's Bedlam in the away end and it was it was great to see and we've watched the videos and the highlights and seen all the, the tweets and everything and the Facebook post and fair play to the boys. That's a that's a, a massive effort and a massive three points and that's that's the double over this side who were in the championship last season. So you can't take um anything away from our fellas. That's a that's a really good effort um to take six points from this side. Um and of course 
um, there was one man missing. And that man again was uh, leading scorer Tom Eaves, so that sent Jill's Twitter, Jill's Facebook and every other social media platform into overdrive. The rumour mill was abound with, oh he's leaving and he's going here and he's going there. I think someone said he was at the New Den on Saturday, but it seems he wasn't. It seems he's got a problem with his ankle and Steve Lovell said he's got an ankle injury and it hasn't really cleared up. He's been rested and hopefully will come in Monday and he'll be okay for next week. There was no point him going out and lasting just 20 minutes and then missing a month. So, take it as you will, Jules fans. It's uh, perhaps coincidental that he keeps picking up little niggles in January and we're being overcautious with him. And of course, the general consensus amongst Jules fans when the rumours started coming out was that if he was to go, maybe let's keep him till the end of the season and let him leave on a free. He deserves that. But the hit for that would be less than if we cashed in for a small fee in January and then ended up getting relegated. But there are signs of life without Tom Eaves, contrary to popular belief amongst some fans. Um, another game without him and another victory. So in the last handful of games since Christmas, um, he didn't score against Cardiff and we won 1-0 and they're in the Premier League. Um, he didn't play at home to... Portsmouth, who were top of the league, Boxing Day, we beat them 2-0. He didn't play yesterday at the Pirelli Stadium, and we managed to score three without him. Um, and players are starting to chip in. Callum Riley, five for the season now. He scored regularly over the last month. Um, home to Doncaster, home to Portsmouth. Uh, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Saturday, not Sunday. So he's chipping in from midfield. Elliot List is finding the net regularly. Josh Parker's back in the fold after that in false break a couple of months ago and, and getting back to, to where we want him to be. Um, reports were that he weren't quite at it at the weekend, but that happens. Um, so, yeah, so there's there's plenty of positives. Brandon Anlon's back from injury. Regan Charles Cook back from injury. So if we can get them two linking up in tandem again like they did at the start of the season, there's, there's something to work with there as well. Um, so, yeah, all in all, a really good weekend. Uh, a, a really good backs to the walls performance and a really good three points. The only negative were a couple of injuries picked up and that was to Gabriel Zaquani and Connor Ogilvy, both defensive problems. But Steve Lovell is hopeful that, that both will be okay for Walsall, which is next Saturday. He says hopefully Connor Ogilvy won't be too badly injured after substituting him in the second half. The on-loan Spurs defender suffered a knee injury after a heavy challenge midway through the first half. And then Zakwani was replaced by Max Amar, who had returned from injury self, missing the previous six with a dislocated shoulder. Lovell went on to say, Gabs came off as a precaution. It was nice to have Max go on and coming back in. It was a knock to the head for Gabs, and he had a bit of double vision, and we didn't want to risk anything. We gave Max a few minutes because we, we will be needing him between now and the end of the season. So, fingers crossed, not too serious. If, um, if they're not, then they'll be available at the weekend. And the only two that are out for a while is, it looks like Billy Bingham and Dean Parrott are still a couple of weeks away. But apart from that, pretty much a clean bill of health. Still no news in the transfer window in terms of incomings, or more importantly, outgoings. Um, it was good to see Liam Nash back involved with the match day squad at the weekend. Uh, but chances are he may drop out if Tom Eads is back to full fitness next weekend. So, But that would be good for Na Nashy. That would do his confidence the world of good. Um, yeah, that's enough from me. Shall be back Thursday um, for weekly roundup. Uh, any news that's happened between now and then. And I look forward to our visit from the Saddlers on Saturday. As always, thanks for watching. Please comment down below. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, any thoughts on the stuff going around the club at the moment. Keep liking, sharing, retweeting. Um, and until next time, up the jewels.